finish it. Pushing the arm back, letting it come forward, letting his partner come forward, and then the spin in. Good competition example here. There's the first attempt. Has the sleeve with both hands. There's the second attempt. And Ippon scored. So faked first of all. Fake didn't work. Then in for the second one. And the drive. Don't very often see Chun throwing to the right. When he does, it's just as effective. After having won the 1993 World Championships in Hamilton, Canada, I again met Hidehiko Yoshida from Japan in the final of the 1995 World Championships. Back in 93, we had fought in the under 78 kilos category, but in the final of the 1995 Championships, I met Yoshida in the under 86 kilos category. During 1994, I'd been through what you could call a slump period, where a lot of things about my judo just weren't right. In addition to this, I wasn't even fighting at home in Korea or in any other country, but in Japan. I was to face the judo hero of his country on his home turf. This was quite a frightening prospect and put a lot of pressure on me. There was a huge crowd watching the match, and I was the defending world champion. And also because I had won against Yoshida before, it was a match I felt I really had to win and greatly desired to win. That's why I fought so hard to win the match. And no other matches in my life or any other feelings I've ever had compared to the thrill of beating Yoshida in 1995. It was so thrilling it made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Yoko Satemi was at one of Chun's minor techniques in his formidable repertoire. Again, looking for the lapel grip, arm over the top, and then the drop through. Chun's right hand crosses over to his opponent's sleeve, and his left hand goes over the top and catches the lapel. He then drops through and drives sidewards. And here from another angle, can't go underneath to get hold of the lapel, so goes over the top, takes the sleeve, and then his head goes underneath his opponent's armpit. And then his legs split. And then the drive. Can't get the underneath grip. Goes over the top. There's the sleeve. Gets his opponent moving. Sends his head through. And drives his opponent over. There's the sleeve and lapel. There's the movement. There's the drop. Leg across. In the first round of the 96 Olympic Games against Housinger of the Netherlands, you can see him tying the arm up here, gets the drive but doesn't get the rotation. There he takes the sleeve, he's got the lapel, head goes down, Housinger does very well to escape. Chun's Koichigari is a reaction technique from his Sianagi. Notice the pulling action, making his opponent think that he's coming in for the Sianagi, and then changing direction. And the strong sweeping action of the foot to drive his opponent backwards. Here's a close-up of the upper body to show the Sianagi movement with the arm. Notice the control he has off the shoulder on a downward movement. And the feet. He gets his opponent to step forward with the left foot and then at the same time, sweeps inside. And now, a realistic situation, on the move, gets his grip, breaks the sleeve grip off, and then the change of direction, Sianagi movement with the arm, makes his opponent think it's Sianagi, changes direction. And here's a very important score against Housing in the Olympics. Scores a Yuko. Housinger expecting the big Sianagi. Chun changes direction. In the final contest of the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta, I faced Amin Bagdazarov of Uzbekistan. He was a totally unexpected finalist, whose judo was also completely unknown to me. But I thought I was going to win the contest from the moment I first grabbed hold of him. I can win this, I thought. And from that moment on, I relaxed, settled back, and it became an enjoyable match. I really don't need to tell you about my joy at the moment of my victory, when I was awarded the match. 
Interestingly, my immediate thoughts were more about the way in which I was going to celebrate and pose for the crowd, so that my victory would leave a lasting impression on everybody watching. Nor was it just then that I thought about that. Actually, the night before the competition and also before that final, as a form of positive image training, I saw myself winning and I mentally rehearsed the winning pose that I would adopt. When I won the fight, the final pose came to me. But looking back now, I don't think it was a really good image. I regret it wasn't better. One of Chun's highest scoring techniques is Uchimata. This variation is against a right-handed fighter. Chun circles to the left, creating space, then launches himself in for his uchimata. Notice how the sleeve grip pushes downwards in order to get the reaction, and then a deep entry with the leg. Now, moving situation, arm goes over the top, dominates the sleeve, and then sends the leg right the way up the middle. From this competition example, we can see Chun launching himself in from an almost static situation. As soon as he has the sleeve, catches the lapel, looks for the opening, and then launches into the Uchimata. In the semi-final of the Olympic Games against Marco Spitka of Germany, you can see Chun attempting the Uchimata from almost a static situation. Spitka pushes the arm forward to defend and manages to ride it out. Later on in the fight though, Chun starts to move and as soon as he starts to move, it becomes a lot more dangerous. There he is, breaks his balance and a beautiful lip on from the Uchimata. So Chun, as soon as he started the movement, created the situation that was to enable him to launch the Uchimata. Look how Spitka dominates Chun's sleeve. Chun grips the wrist, doesn't have full control of the arm, but gets the rotation instead. In his final contest a year later, in the final of the World Championships, also against Spitka, a series of Uchimatas doesn't quite rotate Spitka onto his back, but Spitka just glad to survive and not get thrown for Ippon. Chun's awesome throwing ability completely destroyed Spitka's confidence. Chun's Uchimata against the left-hander is significantly different. Notice how Chun first takes the lapel and then invites his opponent to take his sleeve. He then fakes to pull away the sleeve and then sends the arm straight the way across and launches the Uchimata. There's a lapel grip. The sleeve grip there pulls back gets the reaction from his opponent and pushes the arm across. Because he fakes pulling the sleeve backwards, he makes his opponent grip the grip, lets his opponent take his sleeve, there's the pull back, gets the reaction, and there's the launch of the Uchimata. Pulls the arm back, his opponent grips all the more tighter and almost throws himself. Against Ko Kwang Yul, one of his main rivals in Korea, he once again pulls back with the sleeve in order to get the reaction. Yul thought that he was dominating the sleeve. Good sleeve grip. Almost throws himself, though. Another time, another place, same opponent, and he's falling for it again. Takes the sleeve, dominates the sleeve, and goes over the top with the Uchimata. Well, he can't believe it. Takes the sleeve again. Pushes forward and over the top. 
first round of the World Championships in 1995. And the Hungarian looking for the sleeve. Catches the sleeve. And now he thinks he's got control. But over the top, not quite a punt. Was how he scored. Chung pulls back. Fakes yet again. Throws the arm across. There's the pullback with the sleeve. Uchimata Makakomi. Chun was one of the first fighters to counter Uchimata by riding it and turning his opponent in mid-air. When Chun's opponent takes a high right grip, Chun takes his arm around his opponent's back, rides the Uchimata and pulls hard on the sleeve in order to rotate his opponent onto his back. There's the high grip, and there's the grip around his opponent's back, and there's the ride for the Uchimata. Look at the strong pushing action with the left hand and the pull with the right. And now on the move, there's the grip over the top. There's Chun's grip round the back, and there's the drive. It's all about changing balance. The Uchimata may be strong at the beginning. He rides the Uchimata, tips it the other way. Probably a less risky variation of this technique is when the lapel hand is on the inside and not on the outside. This means that Chunk can drive with the left hand and pull with the sleeve hand and make sure that he tips his opponent onto his back. There's the inside grip, catches the sleeve, pulls the sleeve and pushes with the lapel hand. This means that Chun can tip his opponent, and as soon as we get it on the move, you can see that the inside grip, the poor Uchimata attack, the pulling action of Chun, and the push with the lapel, and you could say that what he's actually doing is just tipping the scales to his advantage. With Morris of the USA, Awazari up, Yun manages to pull out one of the best counters and most important of his life. So really tip the scales there. Morris, very strong with Uchimata, goes in half-hearted on this one occasion. And Jun pushes forward on the lapel, pulls with the sleeve, rotates him onto his back. Against Yanzi of France, he's got the lapel grip. Now can he catch the sleeve? He catches the sleeve. Hashi was a attempt there by Yanzi. There's the Uchimata and there's the tip. And Wazari scored. So Yanzi fully commits himself in for the Uchimata. Tries to throw Shun and gets tipped onto his back. Chun only has one major technique on the ground, and this is a progressive technique leading to Judikatami. He first of all feeds his legs in and makes sure that he traps one arm. He then slips the head and rolls into the Judikatami position, often with his leg trapped. He then has to work very, very hard, pushing on the head in order to create a little bit of space on the arm and then to force it out into the straight position. There's the arm. He's got the arm trapped. He then slips round the head and sits in to the Jujikatami position. He then feeds his left hand through. There's the legs to flatten his opponent out. Immediately after the roll, he slips the head with his left hand and then catches the head and pushes the head away, applying pressure to the arm at all times. He then pulls the left sleeve towards him, lifts the head up and applies pressure to the head with his leg and then finishes the technique by straightening the arm out. There's the slip, catches the sleeve, slips the head, there's the leg around the head and pushes the head away to create pressure into the elbow. There's the left hand going through to the top of the lever. 
pulls the sleeve towards him, putting his opponent under pressure. Now he lets the head come up, pushes it away with his leg, which puts more pressure into the elbow, and then goes to the top of the lever to straighten the arm and finish the technique off. So against Janzi of France, a Wazari ahead, and using this ground technique to waste time, known for it, and he's slipping the head there, doesn't quite get the uh, Jujigatami, and all the time looking to waste that last few seconds. So good control at this moment, slips the leg around the head, doesn't quite have enough control of the arm, and Janzi pulls it in. Again, against Hausinger. Yuko ahead, and now looking to waste time. Straight onto Hausinger's back. And there's the arm. It's there, ready for the taking. Slips the right arm through, and then comes up to fall back into the Jujigatami position. Now, can he finish it from this position? All the time, seconds ticking away. And so, not quite enough control on the arm and they have to stand up. Same contest, and again, looking for the Newaza, looking to waste time, and again onto the arm, trying to slip the leg around the head. There it is. And he's into the Jujigatami position yet again. Housing up, extremely strong, not enough control of the arm, manages to slip it. There were three major reasons why I decided to stop and retire from competitive judo. I had been injured many times, and as a result, I felt that I was losing my top-class physical condition. Also, a lot of my regular opponents had begun to know how to stop my major techniques, and as a result, it was getting much more difficult for me to beat them in style. Those are two of the reasons. But I think the main reason was that during this period, I got the opportunity to return to my academic and sporting studies at university, which is what I'd always wanted to do. Throughout the PhD course I've been doing, I've been able to study the more theoretical side of the sport. One of Chun's greatest abilities as a fighter is to combine techniques together. This first combination is Ouchigari into Epon Sienagi. From the lapel grip, there's the Ouchigari, gets his opponent to move backwards, uses the technique to get a reaction, and then throws the arm underneath the Epon Sienagi. He already has the lapel grip for the Sienagi. And the Ochigari gets the reaction. Chun already has the lapel grip. And as he does the Ouchi, the arm's already under the armpit. And then the Sienagi follows. Second combination is Kochigari into drop Sienagi. Chun takes a traditional sleeve lapel grip. And from the Kochigari, drives his opponent backwards to create space. The Kochigari he uses to great effect, action, reaction, and right the way underneath. And now a fighting situation, gets his opponent moving, catches the sleeve, moves around, fakes with an Ashiwaza, there's the Kouchi, and there's the Sienagi. Gets the reaction he wants, drives forward. Round two of the 95 World Championships. He's got his grip now. There's the Kouchi. Not that effective, but that one was. Sienagi was effective. And an Ippon scored. So really, you had everything there. You had the Kouchi, you had the feint, and then you had the drop Sienagi. And here it is again. Right the way underneath. Gets the rotation through. Here we go. There's the Kouchi. 
There's the feint. There's the drop C and Aggie. Fantastic combination. Semi-final, 97 worlds. Five seconds left on the clock, and he's still going for the big one. And there it is, a fantastic attempt. And great spirit there. Didn't need to go for that, but still wanted to throw for it on. This kind of fighting spirit is what's made Chun one of the greatest fighters of all time. Let's watch it again. Seconds ticking away. Was Ari up? There's the Kouchi. There's the drop Sienagi. And still going for the Ippon. Brilliant stuff. The third combination is Ochi Gary into Osota Gary. Once again, off the Ippon Sienagi grip. Chun attacks with the Ochi Gary. Arm goes underneath for the Sienagi, and then the change of direction for the Osoda Gary. And now on the move, there's the uh, lapel grip. Comes in for the Sienagi Ochi Gary, and then the change of direction for the Osoto. There's the Ochi movement and the Sienagi movement, and there's the Osoto from the Sienagi position. And we've saved his best combination till last. Drops Sodi Surakomigoshi into the Osota Gary. Catches both sleeves. Gets the rotation all the way underneath. Just manages to climb off and then changes it to the Osota Gary. There's the drop into the Sodi Surakomigoshi. And there the change of direction, Osota Gary. Once again, Chun. Now we can see him in a fighting situation, fakes with the Sodi, and then changes the direction for the Osoto. Chun, so many times, uses fakes. There's the fake. Glad to climb off it, but don't climb off that. Chun's greatest match in Japan, final of the World Championships against the great Yoshida. And he's looking for the Ippon. There's the Sodi Surakomigoshi. There's the change of direction for the Osoto. And Chun is world champion. And he beats the Japanese favorite in front of his own crowd. Yoshida, only too glad to climb off that Sodi. Almost looked relieved. And then the change of direction for the Osoto. And Yoshida was flat on his back. There it is again. Climbs off it. Doesn't think that the Osoto is going to come across. Takes him by surprise. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Ki Young Chung is now part of the Korean coaching team, bringing through a new generation of young fighters. He is evidently enjoying his job. The man who fought in the final of the Olympic Games, Amin Bagdazarov, is now one of the national coaches for Uzbekistan. Other great fighters are now part of the new breed of coaches, taking judo forward to a new level. The feats of Ki Young Chung are inspiring the young judoka of Korea to produce exciting and dynamic judo. The future certainly looks bright for Korean judo and one of the greatest judoka of all time. This is my advice for people who want to become the best. When I was 18, my father framed a motto and hung it above my desk. It said, if you put in the same effort as others, then you cannot be better than others. What this means is that if you behave like others, then you are no different than the others. You can't be worse, but more importantly, you can't be better than them. If you want to be the best, or even to be better than others, just try harder. Train more than them, seek out new challenges, and don't ever stop trying to do your best. And don't be afraid to lose. Never have regrets about losing or the mistakes you've made. Instead, learn from them. They're all experiences, however joyful or painful. If you bear this in mind, I believe that anyone can become the greatest. Just always give 100%.